Hello, this is Lucius from ENG Suite. I am one of the software sales and development engineers here at ENG Suite. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about QE Suite. So this is the first in the series of the QE Suite functions where we're going to actually dive into the functions and how to use them. We won't be explaining the math behind them and what they mean in this series. This is just getting you going. So we're assuming you already know why you would want to use them and what you're trying to do with them. We're just going to teach you how to use them and take some things to the next level. All right, so I already have my documentation open. Go ahead and pull that open. We put it in Excel so you never have to leave. Right there for you. Super cool. And this is the QE Suite help page. So this is engsuite.org slash QE Suite slash help. This is our most up-to-date, most accurate help settings. Awesome. All right. So you'll know from our previous video that it's broken down into three sections, functions, parameters, and errors. And today we're going to be living in the functions category. And we're just going to go down in order. They're split up by module. Um, but you don't really need to know that. All you need to know is that all of the great functions you need are right here in Kiwi Suite. <laughs> all right. So here we are in capability analysis. I'm going to describe the layout here for you. That way you know where we're at. So if you notice, every time I hover over this, this is the name of the function. And this is the name of the function in Excel. It's in the QE namespace. So anytime you want to use a QE function, you have to put equals QE dot at the beginning. After that, you'll have a description. So that's just a basic description. In the case of capability analysis, it calculates all four capability indices. Then we have a parameter table, which has the name of the parameter, the description, and whether or not it's required. Okay, So right now, I'm just going to explain what each of these do a little bit, and then we'll actually use it. First, data. That's the data to evaluate. So you're going to select a range of cells that has the data that you want to perform a capability analysis on. It's required. So you have to have the data to do the analysis. Data will always be required. Okay, as will specification. That's the specification you're evaluating against. That'll make a little more sense when we get into this. Name, this is optional, okay? But it's very, very important if you're generating graphs to use this because if you don't, it's going to replace other graphs. So it uses this name to find and replace the graph, okay? So whatever you name it, that's how it's going to find that graph, replace it every time the data updates. Return as object is really, really cool, and it probably won't make any sense to you right now, because this is a new feature that Excel actually just released that really, really makes Excel even more powerful than you ever thought it could be. So what this will do is it'll tell you, when you put in a true value, so it defaults to false, when you put in a true value, it's going to store all of the data, all of the capability indices in one cell. Whereas if you put in false or you leave it at the default, which is false, it'll create a table or an array. It'll spill out all of those values into the um, into the, the workbook. Hide graph is optional as well. It defaults to false, which means that it will create the graph. Okay, So if you don't want to generate the graph, you would put in true there, and then it would not generate the graph. All right, so let's take a look with an example. I've already got this workbook already made because it'll just make it that much faster for us to learn this. So first we're going to do equals QE dot capa, and there we go. Right away, capability analysis. So I'm going to hit tab, and we're ready to start inputting our data. So here we are, parameter data. I have it in this worksheet, just like you're selecting any other range for something. And then we also need our specification. So in this case, I'm going to scroll up to the top, and I'm going to use this cell right there with our specification. 5.892 plus or minus 0 0.015. I'll hit enter, and bam. Because those were our only two um, required parameters, we were able to generate our graph and our capability indices. So let's learn a little bit more about our function. Next, we have dimension name. This is important because, as I mentioned, what we're going to want to do is come in here. We're going to go to data. And we're going to want to make sure we select that so that when we generate the graph, instead of creating a new one, it's just going to delete the old one with that same name. Pretty cool. All right. Next parameter that we're going to want to do is return as object. This is really cool. So right now it's false. And let's say we wanted to go to hide graph instead. 
we wanted to leave this as optional, we, we didn't care about it, we can just hit a comma and it'll move right on. So see how that's highlighted, that's bold, that's bold, that's bold. So we can move on to hide graph, but we won't do that for now. So return as object, we're going to do true. So if you start typing in true, you can either hit tab and that'll go, or Excel is really good at knowing that you want true and it'll automatically do it for you, okay? And this is what I was talking about with objects. Objects are super cool, they're new in Excel, and they are so helpful. So all of our data is now in this one cell. If we want to take a look at it, we can click on this little icon here, and it shows us our CP, CPK, PP, and PPK. But let's say we want to access it. So let's say we have our data, and I'm going to do an insert here. Because like, let's say, insert, we have, um, we'll do result, we'll do dim1, dim2, and I'll, okay, and we have our capability, we have CP, uh, let's do this, we have CPK and PPK, okay, we can do equals, select that cell, and then double click on CPK enter. Now it just pulled the capability, the CPK indice, out of that cell. Or we can do this, and we can do PPK, right? Or we can do dot PPK, and it's not case sensitive either, which is nice. Um, and then let's say you have this for dimensions, you know, all of your data is down here going, and you've got 10 dimensions, you can just do this and drag it all the way over. Super awesome! And then it'll fill out those formulas and pull right from there. So that return as object is really, really useful if you need to store all of your data in one piece um, and you still want to access some stuff. Now with capability, it's not that important because as you'll see in later videos, you can use the um, individual functions. But for something later, you'll see why it gets really important with like a gauge R and R where it calculates and returns all of this information and you really only need two pieces. So really, really cool. Okay, hide graph. This one is really interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the graph first. Okay, delete. We're going to come in and we're going to say true. Okay. And when we hit enter, it'll calculate, but no graph showed up. If I come back in here, and I can even type false, now it's going to generate my graph. Just like that. Works super duper well. And that's it for, for the capability analysis. So really important things to know, you need your data, you need your spec, and that's about it. Well, one thing I realized I should probably mention is your specification. That's really important. There's only a few formats you can have, so I'm, I'm going to show you that right now. Okay. Sorry, I did the name. Silly me. But if you noticed, it just generated a graph. So I changed the specification to data A2. And now it throws error code. Uh-oh. If I click on this button, it gives me some information. Specification not valid. Please make sure the entered value is in an accepted format. Nominal plus slash minus tolerance. Nominal plus or minus sign tolerance. Or nominal plus upper tolerance slash minus lower tolerance. Make sure that whatever you're inputting in there follows that format. If it doesn't, QE Suite won't, it won't be able to parse it out and create a spec limit and actually do the analysis, okay? So what we could do is we could even type it in here. Now you shouldn't because realistically you should have your specification somewhere on the chart that you, way you copy and paste and everything works great. Let's say you don't. You can manually type it in like this, 5.892 plus slash minus 0 0.015. Make sure it's in the double quotations. And there we go. Works just the same. All right. That is it for our capability analysis. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and please do something awesome.